Hey everyone, welcome back to Brown Coat Nerd. Real quick, I want to remind you all to please go check out my Instagram as well as my Rumble page. And now let's get into the video today, which is on the Beretta APX A1 Carry, which is really the third version of the Beretta Nano. Now after taking this gun out and shooting it, I've only shot about 50 rounds through it. I actually ended up walking away from this gun. Well, not walking away from the gun, but walking away from the range. Rather frustrated with Beretta. And I'll get into the details of that here in just a little bit. I did pick this up from Palmetto State Armory not too long ago for $250. And they were also running a $50 rebate from Beretta. So in the end, I will have paid $200 for it, which is not bad at all. I actually wasn't even looking to purchase this gun, but they had some sales on them and that kind of caught my eye. Uh, Palmetto State Armory typically lists these at full price around $300. I believe the original MSRP of these was around 400 but like I said, Palmetto is constantly running sales on these. As a matter of fact, I hopped back online right before making this video to see what they're going for. And depending on what color you want, you can get them as low as $230 plus that $50 rebate from Beretta. Looking around at some other websites, I did find some places selling them for 300 even 350 So if you're interested in getting one of these, definitely shop around there are some really good deals on there and you can get them in both black gray fde and green like the one we have in front of us i did punch in the serial number into Breda's website this particular one was made in 315 of 2024 this is chambered in nine millimeter it's got a three inch barrel and it is striker fire i've seen a few videos refer to this as a double action now it has kind of a long and somewhat crappy trigger, um, which might lead them to believe it's double action, but this is indeed a striker fire handgun. Beretta did make some changes, uh, even to the A1 line, to help bring down that price. The carries haven't been selling really well, as well as really the whole APX line. So Beretta has brought down the price quite a bit, especially on these A1 carries. Now the original A1 carries, Obviously, they all have this cut for a uh, optic if you want to do that route with the A1. However, the original ones had a metal rear sight that was dove dovetailed in to a metal plate. And these later ones have a polymer plate with a polymer rear sight just made into that plate. So there's no dovetail. There's no sight adjustment that you can do to it. Um, and there's really no option to change it up for aftermarket sights. Now, you do still have a metal front sight. And I guess if you can find, let me get that grime off of it. What is that? If you can find an aftermarket front sight, you could still change that out. So that left me a little frustrated because I feel like any kind of gun like this, that's potentially a carry gun, you absolutely need a night sight option. Now the Nano did have some night sight options. I'm not 100% sure if those sights are interchangeable once they switch the name to APX carry. However, looking around, I cannot find any place that has those older Nano Night Sights in stock. And I do believe that they have been discontinued. So we're kind of SOL there. If you want to upgrade the sights on these, you're kind of stuck with putting on a optic. Another change they made originally, these would have come with an 8 round extended mag that you see here. As well as a 6 round mag that would have a pinky extension. And then they would have thrown in one of these flush floor plates. So you can switch between having the pinky extension or the flush plate. The newer ones just come with the one eight round mag, which most people are probably going to end up using. I do like having the option for a flush fit mag, especially on something small like this that you can pocket carry. So you have the option for as deep concealment as possible if you want to go that route. So Breda saved a few bucks by changing out that rear sight and only including the single mag. Which is kind of unfortunate, you're getting a brand new gun and just getting one mag, that kind of sucks. But at the same time, I ended up paying 200 bucks. Sometimes you can even get these for cheaper than that. So, you know, you win some, you lose some. It's, it's a fairly decent trade-off, really, in my opinion. Also, while we're on the mags, it is worth pointing out that the six round, let's throw that in there. And I've got medium to small size hands. And you can see there's no way I'm getting my pinky on there. So, very limited grip on that. If you got larger hands, these mags might not be an option for you, at least without the pinky extension. 
But Beretta does list these as six round mags, the shorter ones, and I was actually able to load up seven rounds in them. Now I did take this out to the shooting range. I only shot about 50 rounds through it, so not a whole lot. Um, and on the second reload of this mag, I discovered I was able to get seven rounds in it. So for the rest of the day, while alternating with the eight round mag, I was loading that up with seven rounds just out of curiosity to see if I would have any issues, and I did not. Now if you're planning on carrying one of these and that's the route you wanna go, I would definitely recommend testing that out a lot before you carry it with that extra round in there. And there might be some long-term issues with putting seven rounds rather than six in there with wearing at the spring maybe. Um, but I'm not 100% positive why Beretta listed as six instead of seven. I was able to get seven in there, do your own testing, but I did want to give you a heads up on that. Hey puppy dog, a little traveler just wandered in here. Also, while we're on the mags, for a very long time leading right up to me getting this gun, watching reviews, people were complaining about how they could not find the mags anywhere. Every place was out of stock. When I purchased this gun, uh, Beretta had just gotten a whole bunch. I was seeing on the forums people talking about, hey, go out and get your APX carry mags that are in stock now. I picked up the additional flush fit mag here. Now, it did come with a PK extension. Palmetto actually sent me the wrong one, but I was lucky and able to find the flush fit floor plate on its own elsewhere but the additional mag did cost me 30 bucks after shipping and handling so not <clears throat> so not terribly cheap but not too expensive so if, and at one point they actually were out of stock of them but once again when I checked their website right before making this video they were back in stock once again so if you need some mags be patient I saw people talking about paying $90 for them on eBay don't do that just be patient they'll eventually come back in stock like I said, I did take this gun out to the shooting range, shot about 50 rounds through it, and that's when I ended up walking away from the range rather frustrated with Beretta. Now, this gun was very accurate. I was surprised at how accurate it was. I did have the occasional flyer. Might have been me. Might have been this trigger. Um, it was also very easy to control. It was not very snappy at all. Part of that might be this larger trigger guard here. The original Nano is more curved. So if you're looking for holsters, keep that in mind. I probably would not get a holster for a Nano. This trigger guard might create some problems. But I was able to get a very good, solid purchase um, with this gun. So very controllable. Now, my frustration with Beretta is this is actually a pretty nice little package. However, they have just fallen short in some areas. Even if that rear sight was dovetailed in and, it, and if it was metal, there's really no aftermarket options for you. There's no night sights that Beretta offers. There's no night sights that anyone else offers. Now, like I said earlier, on a gun like this, I feel that's almost mandatory. The other thing is this trigger. It is not the best trigger. We are working with an empty gun. It is very long. Get a little bit of a false wall, which I will say before I shot this, that false wall was a little more pronounced. It kind of has worn away some, but you get a false wall right about there. You get a little more travel, and you gotta pull it all the way back. The reset is rather long, and while there is a small click, audible click, there's practically no feedback in your finger whatsoever. So they definitely could have made some improvements on that. Also, if you're writing the trigger up too high, these little ears that stick down, you can get your skin in there and get pinched, which not a huge deal. But I just feel like if Breda would have taken a little more time making this trigger better, giving us some options for some night sights, that would have been greatly improved upon this gun. Now, obviously, yes, we are cut for a red dot if you want to go that route which I might end up doing. That's all new territory for me. So if you guys have any recommendations or thoughts on that, definitely let me know. I'm looking at a Holosun 407K. That's probably what I'm gonna get. Um, if you'd advise me getting that or advise me to stay away from that, please let me know because I don't know what I'm doing there. Now the trigger pull after shooting it, I failed to test it before I shot it. So it was did get a little bit of breaking, but not much. It was only 50 rounds. An average of five poles measured out to six pounds, 11 ounces. 
So not the best trigger, but not horrible. And this is a carry gun, so you don't want a super light trigger. Um, one thing I did come across quite a bit was people talking, well, not quite a bit, but a few videos talking about uh, finding tool marks on the barrels. Now, they would point out that there would be tooling marks, which we're not going to get any light in there, on the feed ramp. Uh, and in at least one video I saw where he mentioned it, you could totally see it on camera what he's talking about. This one, I did not have any issues there, thankfully. So, very happy with that. And I do believe these are melanite finished barrels, just like the um, full-size Berettas. APXs, that is. The same video, he mentioned how he could see some tooling marks on the inside of the barrel. Now, he did say that did not appear to affect the accuracy at all for his gun, um, but that also left me a little concerned. I did check that on the inside of mine with a nice, bright bore light, and I did not see any issues whatsoever with mine. I didn't see any kind of tool marks. However, when I was cleaning it, you can kind of see it there. I did notice some real fine lines on the outside of the barrel. Now, I definitely would prefer to have tool marks on the outside of the barrel compared to the inside, so I'm kind of okay with that. Now, one thing that I wish a little surprise with, let me wipe it down here. After only 50 rounds, I noticed that little wear line right there. Now, I'm not complaining about having wear marks on my barrel, but what surprised me is on my full-size APX, once again, we are empty. This has had over a hundred rounds in it. And there's no wear marks whatsoever. And these are both supposed to be melanite finished barrels. So I don't know if the process on the APX A1 carry is a slightly different process of applying the melanite. I don't know if the process in the US is different compared to the Italian ones. Because this one was actually made in the U.S. It's actually my first U.S. made um, Beretta. All of my other Berettas were made in Italy. It's also my first non-military or police surplus Beretta. And I do count this as surplus because even though it was new old stock, it was made for the Brazilian police on contract. So that kind of surprised me. Definitely does seem to be a slightly cheaper finish or application of the finish. Now, once again, my understanding is that Mel and I actually like kind of goes into the metal so even though um you know the black material wears away or it's no longer black there you still have that melanite protected finish and once again if i didn't have the full size apx to compare it to that would not bother me at all it just really surprised me that with you know half the rounds that it was getting a wear mark where the full size wasn't getting a wear mark at all with twice the rounds. so i did think that was different uh, definitely interesting. One of the other things I guess worth pointing out is they switched from a melanite finish on the outer slide from the first gen APXs to their Aquatech finish. Now seeing some videos <clears throat> on the full size APX A1s with the Aquatech finish, I've seen a lot of people kind of complain it seems to wear away pretty quickly. Whereas I have not seen that kind of complaint with the older first gen APXs with the melanite finish. Now, I've seen some people say that these actually are still a melanite finish and then they add that Aquatech finish to the outside. Um, I'm not positive on that whatsoever. Um, and I, once again, I haven't seen that complaint so much about the carry. I've seen it more about the full size. So I don't know if that case, because the full size uh, APXs are made in Italy. I don't know if that case, the Aquatech isn't applied well in Italy compared to the US. I don't know what's going on there, but I did feel like I should point that out for you guys. Another interesting thing is the holsters. There's not a whole lot of holster options out there for the APX A1 carry. You definitely do have options, but once again, it's not a wide variety. Now, this to me is the perfect little option for a pocket holster. That's typically how I carry my Glock 43. And so I went for my most favorite pocket holster, the DeSantis Superfly. And I saw that they did make one for the A1 carry. I was very excited, only to find out once I clicked on it that it was discontinued. Uh, unfortunately, these APX A1 carries just haven't been selling well, along with the entire APX line, unfortunately. Because um, they're, they're good guns, they just kind of get ignored, and then Brett is bringing down the price of all of them to get them moving. 
which I think is a really good deal uh, for what you're getting. However, it is worth pointing out, if you're like me, and you like the DeSantis Superfly pocket holsters, that the one that I have for my Glock 43 with the TLR6 fits this thing perfectly. There is a little extra room up here, because obviously there is no TLR6 on this, but it accommodates this much larger trigger guard perfectly. I do not know if the standard Glock 43 pocket holster would work, because uh, the Glock 43 has quite a bit smaller trigger guard, and this has a pretty big one. So keep that in mind. I'd probably go ahead and order the one that had the TLR6 for the Glock 43 to work on this, just to make sure your trigger guard doesn't get snagged up anywhere. And I am a little bummed out that even when Brett switched to the A1 version of this gun, they still did not add any texturing on the front of their trigger guard. The full-size APX line did get additional texturing up here, but the carries just kind of got ignored. Also, the A1s on the full-size got a little bit of an undercut right here. Once again, unfortunately, the carries just kind of got ignored in that part. Pretty much all these got was an additional texture on the side here and up here. And I guess it is worth noting that this did get, when they switched to the A1, we also got a takedown lever whereas the first gen APX carries did not have a takedown lever. It had the old nanos type with, where you needed like a flathead to unscrew it. And then uh, we do have a slide lock just on the one side. It's not ambidextrous like the full size. And the first gen APX A1 carry also had the slide lock whereas the nano had no external slide lock. So just pointing that out. And then I think the last thing to point out is I see a lot of people complain about the guide rod and they seem to be concerned that their guide rod's doing that. So you've got a funky little curve. They all do that. From all the videos I've watched, people have pointed this out too. That is pretty normal for the APX uh, carry. So if you get one of these and you see that and you're like, oh man, do I got a defective part? Nope, that's just how they are. And make sure you get it all the way down there. I have seen some where they get kind of a little bit higher up and then they reassemble them and the slide kind of hesitates to go forward. And I think their issue is that's not seated all the way down there. And while we got it apart, it is worth pointing out that like the full size APX, we got a pretty good amount of rails here, which I like very much about this line of guns. Like compared to my Glock 43, I got a little section on either side up here and then a little section on either side back here and that's pretty much it so did want to point that out well of course now i'm having issues while i'm recording well, what's going on here all right there we go Get that full size mag back in here i guess it is worth pointing out what came in the box which is just a cheap cardboard box you do not get a plastic box and I think the first gen carries, you also got like a little uh, nylon zipper case. You don't get that anymore. Get a little cutout that the gun sits in. Of course, it is in this blue bag when you get it. We get an instruction manual, which like any Beretta instruction manual is pretty in-depth and very good. You get your warranty information. And then, of course, you get the branded, uh, branded trigger lock. Which, if anyone has any ideas what to do with those, like art project or something, let me know. So I'm getting a pretty big collection, and I don't know what to do with them. So all in all, yes, look, and there's the back of the box. Nothing, nothing special. No little blue cup holder either. All in all, I'm pretty happy with this purchase. For 200 bucks, I cannot complain. But like I said. I definitely feel like there's some areas that Bredov could have improved just a little bit that would have left me going, guys, you have to get this gun. Now, why did I get this gun? I don't freaking know. I've already got a carry gun. I'm very happy with my Glock 43. Don't plan on changing it out anytime soon. I got this gun because it was $250 bucks plus a $50 rebate. It's $200 Beretta, brand new. Um, cheapest Beretta I've ever purchased and like... Only the second new Beretta I've ever purchased. All the other ones have been used. So it was a killer deal. And I really don't feel like you can say no to that. 
Now, would I pay three hundred or three hundred and fifty? Um, if I needed a carry gun, I might pay three hundred. However, having my Glock forty three and the options on there, I probably would pay just a little bit more. Would I pay four hundred for this? Absolutely not. I, I would not pay four hundred. But if you can pick one up for two hundred and fifty bucks to a little less than two hundred bucks, I mean it, it's worth it. It's just a cheap gun and it's going to work despite having some minor issues. So that's really all I've got for you on this one, guys. I will be doing a comparison, an in-depth comparison of this to my Glock 43. So if you're curious about that, that will eventually be coming out. And that's all I've got for you guys. Thank you for watching. If you did like this, please consider liking and subscribing. And of course, as always, stay safe and stay shiny.